My name is Alec Bizunke. I'm an assistant professor at INSEAD in the entrepreneurship department. And I study all kinds of aspects about collaboration, competition, crowdsourcing, and now AI as I'm interested in modern forms of organizing. What excites me about AI is an aspect that I believe has not yet gained enough kind of attention in the public press. We're always talking about how AI is going to replace people or is going to help people. But one aspect which I think is fascinating is that AI will truly help to develop people. So people will improve their skill set by training with AI. I do research on chess computers because I think it's a fantastic way to understand what the impact of AI can be. If you think about chess computers, chess computers is probably the technology which is the most similar to AI, but which has been around for decades by now. And because it has been around for such a long time, and it has been so widely diffused, a lot of people have chess computers, right? I've played with a chess computer. So we can use chess computers to understand the effect that AI may have on human skill development. So I do, this, I do this research together with my co-author, Fabian Gessler, at the Max Planck Institute. And Fabian had a fantastic idea and has built an enormous data set on the usage of chess computers over the last few decades. And what is so beautiful about chess computers is that chess computers open us up to what is called a natural experiment. Because chess computers were not available in the former Soviet Union but they generally were available in Western countries. And so we can look at the evolution of the skill set of chess players in Western countries and in the former Soviet Union. And so that allows us to see the kind of difference AI may make on the skill development of people. What is fascinating and what you can see beautifully in that research is that humans actually improve when they train with AI. So it's not that the AI would simply replace the human. We often talk about that chess computers are better than humans. But what is probably more intriguing and more relevant for us as a society is that the chess computer allowed the individual players to become better over time. What we clearly see is that having access to a chess computer makes you significantly better of a player than if you do not have access to this primitive form of AI. You can actually then disentangle the mechanisms which play out in that. If you think about it, if you want to improve in chess, what you really need is an opportunity to interact with somebody else, right? You need an opponent against whom you can play. And what chess computers do is that they constantly give you an opportunity to hone your craft. There's always somebody against whom you can play. One aspect why I believe this is also incredibly important for organizations and businesses is that there are a lot of activities where managers and leaders need to be better, but it's very difficult to train. Imagine you wanted to become a better strategizer and you wanted to be better at strategy. It's very difficult to try out, right? You cannot just adopt strategy A today and adopt strategy B tomorrow. But what AI allows you to do is that the AI can simulate your opponent in the marketplace and so you can play through what would a strategy do? What is the kind of equilibrium we would reach? So while chess computers, in the way I study this, is like a tiny space in which we try this out, the implications are much broader. And I expect to see that in the future, much more people will train using AI. The implication of this research of the effect of AI on training human skills is extremely relevant for business. So let me give you one example. If you want to try out a strategy as a company, that can be very difficult, right? Because you to see whether a strategy is high performing, 
you need to anticipate how the other players in the marketplace will respond to that strategy. But you cannot simply implement the strategy and see what happens because you cannot just try out one strategy a day. So what you can do is using AI, you can play through different kind of scenarios how a strategy might play out and by doing that you get a good feeling for how this could play out. My research on AI also is helpful to understand how we could use AI in training all kinds of companies or company activities. Take as an example call centers. It's not easy to train somebody to be a good employee in a call center because you need to learn how to interact with people on the hotline. What the AI can do is that the AI actually simulates customer requests and evaluates your answers. So you can interact with the AI and as you interact, the AI helps you to become a better interaction partner. One interesting aspect, which my research also shows, is that those locations which are advanced in artificial intelligence will benefit on a much broader scale. So in my research, I can see that players who were based in the Soviet Union and did not have access to this form of primitive artificial intelligence performed significantly worse than players in Western countries which had access to this primitive form of artificial intelligence. And so you will see over time that places which are advanced in artificial intelligence will might also get more advanced in other kind of human skills because artificial intelligence has all these kind of spillover effects. You see, one thing which I think is key to get AI more in the marketplace is that people really see the potential in it, even where the potential might not be immediately evident. If you think about the chess players I study, right? A chess, in a turn, chess game in a tournament is always a human player against a human player. And so at first sight, you might say, well, this is not a great space for AI, as we will always have a human against human competition. But in fact, what you can see is that AI serves as a training opportunity and by doing so, it really helps the humans to compete against one another. So I believe we will get a much better adoption of AI if people understand what are the subroutines in their work where they can make good use of AI. So instead of thinking, is it AI in my profession or not, they should break this down decompose it into specific tasks and say what aspects of my daily life could I outsource or where could I benefit from AI more specifically. Yeah, I also see applications of AI in other industries which I study. For example, I've just published research on Formula One. And one of the interesting aspects about Formula One is that these drivers need to compete against one another. But for these drivers, it's very difficult to find in training somebody who's on their level who they could compete against. And so in their training, they very often just drive in simulations in which they would simulate complete races and drive, drive against other AI drivers. So there's another example where the AI really helps you to learn how to compete and then in the actual race to win against humans. And that I believe is a principle we will see much more generally, that people learn how to interact or how to compete with other humans by using the AI, even if the AI ends up not being present when the actual competition or the actual interaction takes place.